Hello my friends, welcome to Prime Strings. I'm Henriette and today we are learning with an upbeat in the Wagon Wheels book. Now when you look at with an upbeat you can see there are a lot of rests first and that is when the piano plays its introduction. And this is the first piece in the book where it's written out in proper music. So you see that big three which means three bars rest. Um, in previous pieces, when you look at Full Moon, for instance, it says at the top, count four bars. And that is the exact same thing as what you have written out in music here in With an Upbeat. Those three bars are just a pause while the piano introduction plays. So if you have a CD with your book and you listen to the CD, you're not starting immediately. You let the piano go first. So I'll talk you through the piece, how we play it. So you start at the beginning with a piano introduction, then you start to play your notes, and then at the start of line two, you can see the two dots, which means there is a repeat, and you're going to repeat up to this point. So bear it in mind, there's nothing you need to do at this stage, but just take it in. Then you play the whole of line two, and then going into line three, you see that bracket with uh, figure one there, that means this is your first time bar. So the first time when you play it, you play these two bars. Then you go back to repeat to the beginning of line two. Then you play line two again and line three. And then you skip the first time bars. You go into the second time bars. And that is where you see that little two and that bracket above it, which means these two bars are the second playing. So the first time you play the piece three, you play the first time bars, then when you repeat, you pick the second time bars and you skip all that's written underneath the bracket marked as one. Now let's see if we can work that out, shall we? I'm going to count us in for two, and we're starting at the end of line one. So what I count are the two crotched rests there. So we're starting on a three and. So you start not far from the heel of the bow, right here. One, two. by starting at the end of line two and those three notes here at the end of line two I want you to play with a long bow so use the whole bow for those three notes and those two notes also get the long bow but sometimes you get two notes slurred in this piece and you play those also with a whole bow, so your bow goes half as fast. So if you look at um, line two, the third bar, you get this. And you see that that single A gets a whole bow. But these two notes third also together get a whole bow. So your bow travels much less fast. Very occasionally here, just before the first time bar, you get two quavers slurred, which also get the whole bow. Now, of course, two quavers slurred are the equivalent of one crotchet. So if we start again at the end of line two, we're going to go equally fast. You see, that's also a whole bow. So it is a little bit varied, and I would almost say, why don't you play everything with a whole bow, apart from the first two notes that you play. 
So we're starting here near the heel at the start because those notes are not very important. The D that comes on the first beat of the following bar, so the first bar in line two, is more important. So don't use too much bow here because you get too loud then if you do that. So play everything with a whole bow except for the first two notes where you play a half bow upbeat. Shall we play that together? So I'm going to be ready and prepare myself in the middle of the bow. Up bow. One, two. into your music when you use so much bow. You know of course that there are three ways that we can put our louds and softs in. We can play louder by using more bow which we're already doing so you're playing fairly loudly. Then you can come closer to the bridge a little bit with your bow so instead of here you might be playing there and of course our third method for playing louder or softer is leaning into the string more so that your playing gets a little bit more weight into the string that makes it louder or not pressing so hard which makes it a little bit softer so when you use everything with whole bows you're going to have to look for those other ways so i'm suggesting now that we're going to focus on the placing of our bow and when we play a little bit more quietly i want you to drift your bow towards the fingerboard Whereas if you want to play a little bit louder, I want you to try and pull the bow towards the bridge. So we're still going to use everything except for the first two quavers with a whole bow. But now you're going to look for the louds and softs by pulling your bow towards the bridge to play louder or pushing it towards the fingerboard to play a bit more quietly. Let's play it one more time, trying to work that out, shall we? So I'm starting mezzo forte, so I'm starting nearer the fingerboard a little bit. Are you ready? One, two. That was very nice. It gives your playing a sort of airy quality, doesn't it, when you play nearer the fingerboard? But now, where we've ended up right now, we need to come closer to the bridge. So we'll carry on here and... So you see if you can drift your bow towards a fingerboard and come closer 
to the bridge again and you will notice a really different quality in your playing that is a big discovery well done so you've got a bit more expressive today that was really really smashing playing so can you tell me in the comments below this video how that was for you what do you think how do you like that quality or do you not like it at all let me know how you feel about it i look forward to seeing you again soon but for now goodbye